Exploitation Section, Exhibitor's Trade Review, April 8, 1922. A close-up of the Dalton measuring apparatus and the display used back of it by Manager Mossers of the Rialto, Jamaica, New York, for Paramount's Fool's Paradise. Manager Dorman of the Plaza, St. Petersburg, Florida, passed up rain insurance, but he had this display insured, which was rather unusual and got him quite a bit of additional publicity. Frank Moyer, manager of the Auditorium, Georgetown, Ohio, a first national franchise holder, organized a jazz band of five boys who could play anything from ragtime to grand opera, who not only play at the Auditorium, but also at dances, parties, and picnics. That big bass drum tells the reason why Moyer supported the band until it got on its feet. Manager Cobe of the Central of New York tied up with two stores on Broadway, one at 42nd and the other at 46th Street, in which he arranged window displays for Universal's Wild Honey that consisted of live bees at work in a box of honeycomb. They attracted so much attention at times, it took the cops to keep the crowds moving. Sunbaked Louisville was treated to a real novelty in seeing two Arctic Huskies being led around the streets by a man dressed in a heavy fur coat and cap. There were no signs on either the man or the dog to indicate they were a ballyhoo, so it started the citizens to asking questions on every side, and they were much surprised to find that this ballyhoo was advertising First National's The Silent Call, playing at the Walnut Theater. This display cost $4, including the salary of the young lady behind the wash tub. It was arranged by Frank Miller of the Rialto, Augusta, for Paramount's A Homespun Vamp. The farm scenery was borrowed from a legitimate theater, and the girl pretended to use a certain brand of soap that a local store was pushing, so the expense of the display was split 50-50. As soon as the manager of the Mecca, Saginaw, Michigan, found that alterations were to be made on this building, which is close to his theater, he secured permission from the contractor with a few passes to put up these bills for First National's Molly O. Such billing on the busiest corner of a town will always boost business. Manager Cowles of the Rex, Spartanburg, South Carolina, featured real action in his lobby display for Paramount's Saturday Night in such a unique manner that it attracted the attention of thousands, one of whom was a news hound, and he gave the display some unexpected publicity. It was made entirely from paraphernalia borrowed from a store. The Eiffel Tower and Ferris Wheel were operated by a toy motor. You don't always have to hire a band to make people look at your ballyhoo. Put a punch in it and they will look every time. That's what Manager Tooker of the Regent, Elmira, New York, did with this one for Paramount's Fool's Paradise. A two-horse buggy plastered with posters would not have attracted any attention. Tooker made this one attract attention, even in Elmira, by hitching one horse before the other. A huge cutout money bag advertising Paramount's Get Rich Quick Wallingford, surmounted by a figure of Wallingford taken from a stock poster, made up the display used by Manager Lewis of the Lyric Theater, Connorsville, Indiana, for that picture. It was the first exploitation stunt of its kind Connorsville had seen. A flash can frequently be made without killing a bankroll, and the Liberty, Corning, New York, has it down to a pretty fine point. This time, they took a more or less easily recognized sedan and covered it with stock paper, supplemented by a cloth over the hood, then started it to journeying around the streets of Corning as a ballyhoo for Paramount's forever. Nor did you have to look twice to see what it was advertising. The cost of this lobby display, arranged by manager Weld, Strand Theater, Waterloo, Iowa, during the celebration of First National Week, was negligible. The heads of the stars were clipped from 24 sheets and mounted on compo board. The streamers on the walls and the overskirts of the ushers were of paper. A distinctly Chinese atmosphere was achieved by the Euclid Theater, Cleveland, Ohio, in their lobby display for Paramount's The Mistress of the World. Manager Holloway of The Palace, Macon, Georgia, rigged up a music counter in his lobby for Universal's Playing With Fire. A local 5 and 10 cent store loaned the counter and the music, together with a girl that resembled the star, Gladys Walton. This girl played popular music on the piano, and pedestrians stopped, looked, then rubbed their eyes and wondered when the 10 cent store moved to the palace. The Branford, Newark, New Jersey, arranged a display on top of the marquee for First National's Hail the Woman that consisted of a cutout from the 24 sheet of a woman with outstretched hands suspended from a small illuminated sign. Spotlights connected to a flasher were placed at the base of the figure and made it stand out conspicuously at night. Manager Myers of the Washington Theater, Chester, Pennsylvania, duplicated a battleship's turret with two 16-inch guns pointing menacingly across the street for Associated Exhibitors, A Sailor-Made Man. 
On the turret between the guns, he mounted a big cutout of Harold Lloyd in sailor costume and goggles. Manager Gaines of the Coliseum, Philadelphia, offered any girl a dollar a minute to sit in this tub full of water for 10 minutes. His offer was accepted, and when the news got broadcast, it took the reserves from the police station to handle the crowd. The girl went through with the stunt in a bathing suit. It made Paramount's Saturday Night the talk everywhere. 